Hello everybody and welcome to my YouTube channel, all of you returning subscribers, thank you for your support and if you're new go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Well today I have a very special guest for you. She is a new earth leadership coach, transformative artistic facilitator, she is an incredible musician. I met her when I was 18 years old. I can't forget her beautiful flute music and her movement and dance and her embodiment of her impression of herself expression as well her name is Tanya Ridgely and she is also known as T-Bird Love T welcome mm, thank you so much I'm so happy to be here ladies it is our turn and our time it is our turn and our time so what does that mean that means we've got to see ourselves in our greatness that means that despite sometimes feeling like oh, I don't feel like I'm on top of my game today or I'm not doing enough or I'm not really clear on how or I'm feeling kind of like in scarcity mode. Instead of blaming and shaming, instead be like, hmm, what do I need? What do I need so I no longer have to feel like this? Okay, so the first way to do that is I would say become a better witness instead of a judger. Why? Because the moment you have awareness about who you're being, all of a sudden, boom, you're more empowered to make a healthy choice. All of a sudden, boom, I have consciousness about it and now I can choose what I want because we have free will. But when we're unconscious or when we're in that toxic languaging or like, oh, I'm always, or I never, or I don't want, and I should. So when we get into kind of those patterns, which we all will, because that's just the nature of our reality. But instead of judging those things and thinking that we're bad and not good enough and unworthy and unlovable enough and all this, and da, 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 it gives us a chance to see, well, wow, I'm feeling that way. If I'm witnessing it, I can then make a more empowered choice, which comes from the perception of, you know what, I'm human. And my feelings are just feelings. They're not facts, they're not truths. They're just sensations that allow me to have a human experience. So now that I'm conscious about how I'm feeling and starting to say, well, what do I need in order for me to feel relief? I need to speak up more and ask for my needs so that people can then see me the way that I want to be seen. Or, wow, I could set more boundaries so that I can train people how to be with me and hold me in the way I want to be held. Maybe I just need to step off the sidelines and play on the court, because I've been over here judging, like, mm -mm, trying to get ready. Well, what if I'm done getting ready and I just make it real, even if it's not perfect, but it's authentic? So it's about getting in this whole new mindset. And so become a better witness instead of a judger so that you're more empowered to make a healthy choice because we got free will y'all so let's act on it let's reprogram our nervous systems to feel our own worthiness by taking responsibility the ability to respond to how we feel instead of reacting to it yes oh my god thank you so much <laughs> i needed to hear all of that actually right now i really did <laughs> I invite you to share this video with your soul sisters, your siblings, your mothers, your aunts, your grandmothers, whoever you think will benefit from this video. And feel free to comment below, share your thoughts and your feelings. I'm so excited to have you here because I have so many questions for you. And one of the main subjects today is all about women. And so my first question for you, what is a woman? and what is feminine energy to you? First, I'll start with feminine energy. I feel like the feminine energy, which is something that's very powerful that lives in all of us. And I know as uh, a pretty strong woman out in the world, someone who has big dreams, big visions, who likes to move forward, I'm actually embodying more of that feminine energy in my lifestyle like many of my ambitious make it happen women out there and i say this first because even though we're 
women, and I'll, I'll just own it for myself, even though I'm a woman, uh, I have led in the past with my more masculine traits, you know, getting ahead, producing results, making things happen. And what I've come to realize over time is that it's not sustainable and it doesn't feel all the way natural to me because there's something that felt disconnected. So this feminine energy, this energy that is all around us and very mysterious and seems like I say mysterious and confusing sometimes because catalytic masculine energy, there really is no mystery to it, right? It's like, well, if you do A plus B, you get to C and da, 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 da. So there's no real mystery to that, but we need that. I think the, the, the problem has been that it's been too much of that because the feminine requires really tuning in with intuition. It's like a deep knowing, which comes from an ability to trust to trust despite the unknown. And I found that as someone who has grown up as a woman in this day and age, as well as inherited some of the belief systems from all of the generations prior, you know, trusting that intuition has kind of been stamped out. And it's about surrendering, you know, surrendering and trusting, which means, oh my God, we have to let go of controlling. So I feel like the process of learning how to trust my own authentic voice by being in the mystery and that creativity, the divine feminine is that mystery, the void of creation where everything, those dreams become alive in that imagination. And in order for them, us to manifest them, we utilize that catalytic energy of the masculine to help make it happen. But I find that the more that I can embody more of her, more of that trust and softness, which I think we all are having to do considering, you know, the last couple of years we, we've moved out of and determining where we're going, of learning that surrender and allowing that creative force, that trust, that mystery for when you look back and you're like, oh, wow, six months have passed and I've really changed to really actually say those are that's valid and that matters and it's very strong. Woman, we've had, you know, various narratives that we've been given at birth on what it means to be a woman. My mother's generations prior, what it means to be a lady, to be polite, to be soft-spoken, to, to care, give, to take care of your man, how, you know, to do whatever it takes for your children, to sacrifice your needs. Some of these things that were put in place that I'm not necessarily judging as bad, but they weren't the whole story. And it's not necessarily healthy. And the reason why many of us who I feel are leading the way are no longer really living in that old narrative. But it's not just about that. It's not about pushing back and rejecting it either, right? It's not about pushing it back and that was wrong. It's about learning from that learning the lesson, transcending the behavior of it, but including that lesson. And then asking the question, well, where do we go from here? Because <clears throat> coming from my great grandparents, my grandparents, my mother's generation, there was a certain way of being a woman. You know, you got married, you had kids, you know, hopefully you married someone who had money. Well, now in our age, we get to be whoever we want to be. Many of us are CEOs, whether we want to be a teacher or a nurse, a housewife, someone who runs organizations, we get to choose what we want to be. And so I feel like who we are as women is evolving. We have options. And I think many of us who are waking up to embodying more of our vocation of destiny and are really kind of picking up well, where to, asking these questions like, where do we go from here? I like to think about the evolutionary woman, the woman who is, who's evolving her identity to match this new emerging paradigm that is, is arising because of our circumstances in terms of, wow, the life is crazy right now. And as well as having this deep remembrance, I feel of our soul plan saying, okay, click, something's coming on. I know I was born here for a much bigger purpose and I want to contribute, but how do I do that? Now I know why they call you the new earth leadership coach. I mean, you just gave me goosebumps because I definitely can relate to that. And I can relate to the whole uh, process of healing, healing the ancestral healing, doing all this work in order to show up in the new way, to show up in the new power, to be connected within self. That was just really so powerful. I mean, I'm sure with us and all the women who are part of this amazing um, group of women who you brought together and the timing we're lived, there's like this resonance that's bringing us together. Those of us who recognize that, like, you know what? 
sometimes it's 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 no longer therapy that we only need it's about just being reminded of our magic and that's what's exciting to me is like you know how we've been so trained to look at all the things that are wrong with us that we started making it who we are and then unconsciously self-sabotaging ourselves well as an evolutionary woman and someone who's leading this in a new sort of framework it's like yeah we're recognizing you know that served and i'm ready to move forward it's not going to serve anymore because how can you create something new bringing the same old shit in place so it's like we've got to cultivate this new way of seeing our lives and who we are and trusting the resonance that's bringing us together as we learn how to complete each other instead of compete so it's it's a very exciting time i think for us definitely and i love that you know women who are conscious about what you just mentioned that they support each other that they uplift each other and they're absolutely okay to say listen i'm not going to be able to help you with that setting personal boundary and saying but i have someone who's going to be absolutely perfect just for you and you just go ahead and you reference to someone else i think that's very powerful knowing yourself boundary and knowing to say no <laughs> I feel like a lot of times women have a difficulty of saying no because we're so nurturing and we also um, want to help and, and support and that's just part of our nature. But I think that it's very important to set healthy boundaries and say no, but I have someone else for you who's going to be perfect. So I definitely appreciate what you just said. One more thing I wanted to ask you is... Um, in regards to, you know, uh, someone who's traveled the world, so someone who has helped thousands and thousands of people, you know, China, US, Mexico, different parts of the world, how do you manage your roles? Because, I mean, you're a producer as well. I know you've produced many different um, uh, gatherings, projects, and also at the same time, you're an intuitive healer, you're a transformative arts facilitator, and I mean, obviously, a new earth leadership coach. I can definitely, I mean, this is like resonates with me so much. How do you manage these different roles? Well, the first thing I want to say is I don't see that they're separate. They all stem from the same purpose. So it's not that I have to be this new earth leadership coach and then then an intuitive healer and then an artist it all comes together i don't have to separate who i am to fulfill a role and that's what feels so good about living it now our ancestors really hooked us up you know that we get to be online and talking about this stuff freely you know and really rocking it so I don't separate myself. In fact, I think something that was challenging for me over the years was how to express what I do because I always felt like I was ahead of my time. And now I feel like I'm right on time because of what's happening. Um, I'm an artist. Uh, I've been an, a performing artist and musician for most of my life, over 36 years, which sounds crazy. Um, and I believe that artists revealed to us what we didn't know was missing. And so I was able to take that and then merge her with the part of myself that is motivated in world service, right? An agent of change, a change agent, someone who's here to help us transform. And I believe that that aspect of, of me helps engage things that seem impossible and to reveal what is possible. I mean, if you think about it, impossible things have been happening throughout time. I mean, for God's sake, at one point we weren't allowed to vote. And at one point the world was flat until it wasn't. And there was no way we were going to the moon. And are you kidding me? A computer in our phone and like, what, what, what? And like desegregation, like all of these different things that were impossible that now are. And I love, I'm part of that pioneering crew that likes to think outside of the box. So I've got my artist mixed with my change agent and then the intuitive healer part comes from, you know, I had to, I'm here to teach what I came here to learn. And I, I, I feel like in order for me to have a real connective experience, as well as to really be able to help others, I had to have had those lived experiences too. And um, I'm a Reiki master, I'm a light ascension therapist. I've spent 20 plus years working with many indigenous different groups and plant medicines and these different things. And my family, through my mother's line, my grandmothers had gifts. And I also feel chosen. I have my own, I have my own connection with spirit in a way that I've learned how to trust. 
and there's a remembrance and I, I call it like recovering the memory of who I am as well as recovering the memory of my future. When I bring that healer in, which is her ability to help go into the shadow to retrieve the light, it's about integration instead of separation. And so all of my work has all three of these parts, the sacred trinity that creates this whole nother level of who I am that's really has been uncategorizable. And I think that that's what happening to, what's happening to many of us. I don't fit in one category because we're multidimensional. I'm utilizing gifts to address the needs that the other prior things weren't able to. So oftentimes people who've been through therapy or been through coaching programs or all of these things who feel like they're at the, you know, they're at the precipice of wanting to lead. They're like, I need something more. They then come to me because I have a whole new creative process from being able to live through that process of seeing, oh, here's the gaps. Here's where I can bridge it and creating my own signature system, my own voice, which is also, I, I believe is what's emerging in many of us. We're developing our own unique voice and really owning it. It's not just one Thing. We live in a complex world that requires a creative process, that requires also taking action in that masculine way, that requires doing productive relaxation, you know, relaxing into that. So it requires a lot of, I think, spiritual and practical tools that need to be bridged together. And I feel like I've been really blessed at learning how to do that through experience, also studying things, trying things out, being international global citizen, and really learning how to develop my own way of really closing the gap so that I can be of service to all of you light workers out there who are dealing with all of this complexity. It's not just one way. So I feel like it's important for all of us to think and to get into a mindset that it's not just one way. What are the things that make you come alive? What's missing? How do you even better if? It's not just one thing and don't feel like you have to only be one thing to accomplish. That narrative of success that we are already outgrowing and it's crumbling before our eyes, we're starting to develop a new one by how we're showing up in our authenticity and by modeling a new way of being that's about integrating all parts of ourselves instead of separating and putting in categories. So we're learning how to do that more by taking an important risk, key important risk that says, you know what, I'm gonna just be myself and I'm gonna rock myself. And despite if anybody understands me or not, because unfortunately, you know, we've come out of generations of unworthiness of feeling misunderstood, of feeling afraid, of feeling not safe, of feeling like I better be an overachiever because I don't want to be sought out as an imposter and not good enough. All of these things affect all of us. I don't know anybody who is exempt. And so right now, the way to help, I think, us step more into our roles as evolutionary women is learning how to hold without collapsing and integrate like really transcend the identity with it which is what we used to do as women oh i'm not enough i have to shrink i'm not going to say what i really feel oh you know these are my true feelings but i don't want to rock the boat or i have to push or i'm too much or whatever the thing was is we're now saying let me integrate the lessons but transcend the identification with it and i think that that comes from integrating, not managing different parts. I'm my whole self in my one-on-ones, my retreats, my trainings, whether or not I'm working, you know, in an organization, a company, or with individuals. I'm my full self, and I love that I've been able to not separate myself anymore. Because as I was growing up, as I was younger, I used to think I had to. And I recognized that I did have to, at one certain point because I had to develop that skill. Yes, that was definitely very powerful. And I want to kind of roll back a little bit and talk about, you know, trusting, surrendering without trying to control things. Do you have any tips that you might want to give out on how to do that, how to let a woman surrender and trust the process? Because you seem so authentic and so true to who you are and to true to your own calling that I think it would be so fascinating to hear what you can advise or some tips on how to surrender and yes absolutely 
part of the first thing is to recognize that you're already on the journey. I think sometimes because we've been so conditioned to focus on getting to the result, we forget that we're actually in a process, which is very feminine. The divine feminine is the process, right? And so to recognize, wait a minute, I'm in a process. And to recognize and realize and remember that your capacity to love is far greater than any fearful thought or feeling. So I feel like the the ninja Jedi Knight move in terms of modeling love would say, all right, so if I'm not making my wound more important in the healing or fighting to be right, I'm seeing what was missing. How can I give that to myself now? Why have I been looking outside of me for validation? How can I become my best cheerleader, my best friend, my source? resourcefulness and that comes from really embodying self-love and developing i like to say an unfuck withable sense of self-worth because that's the kind of commitment we need which comes from the practice of self-loving and holding so that when we come through the atmosphere we don't burn up as things change and as we take our place in the world as evolutionary women it's like learning how to do special forces training for people who feel chosen so it's a different way of seeing things. Don't make your wound more important than the healing. Take the risk you need to make to show up in your vulnerability, set those boundaries, like you said, know what your needs are and how to express them. And then after you've done that, celebrate and pour honey all over your nervous system because you've got to retrain her to see and experience her worthiness and remember that she is capable of being extraordinary as she is being extraordinary as she's becoming extraordinary by modeling love. Oh, wow. I felt that <laughs> for sure. I got goosebumps all over several times. That was truly magical and very powerful. And you guys, please make sure you check out the description about Tanya, her website. She also has a gift for you. She has a free workbook that you can check out and definitely do the exercises and follow through with it. You know, take time for self healing, self love. Uh, like uh, Tanya just said, you know, don't make the wound way more than the healing. Yeah, take take that time heal you know reprogram yourself step into the new earth age step into that new self and discover your true authentic self go with your intuition go with your calling it's incredible tanya i want to ask you one more last thing if possible do you have any morning rituals that you might share with people uh with women out there um would love to hear your morning rituals thank you again so much for having me it really means a lot and you know connecting with all the women who are watching this now I don't believe in coincidence and it feels beautiful to feel us in the system and the transmissions moving through as I feel like I'm doing great spirits work you know when you feel chosen you want to give so part of my own rituals whether it's in the morning and sometimes right before I go to bed because I also have a ritual before I go to bed so that when I wake up I start in a new way. It's important for me to feel useful and aligned because when I don't feel useful, that's when all my stuff comes up, right? Like I grew up learning how to be an overachiever because I never felt good enough for whatever my own story reasons are. And it began to burn me out. And what I've been doing over a long period of time now is just recognizing, look at what I've already created and done. Sometimes we forget about where we've come from because we're already off to the next. Like it's never enough. Like, oh, I got to work more. Oh, I need to improve this more. I need to like build my followers better. I need to like go to this next thing. And there's always go, 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 go. And I feel like it's a trap. It keeps us in that paradigm of smallness. And so one way that I remedy that is I look at and I actually say out loud, girl, I'm so proud of you today. Look at what, what we've accomplished. Even when you didn't feel motivated or you were doubting yourself and it was hard to get that creative spirit, you took a break, you had a dance break, or um, you went outside, you took a deep breath. Um, simple everyday things, you know, no tuning in with what I need. And so I love to take that time to just honor and recognize what actually is happening, not what I think should be happening. 
So if you have a little journal or a good book, sometimes I record in my phone, you know, I'll talk to myself out loud. Um, I think it's a really great way actually speaking out loud to the different parts of yourself. It'll help you build deeper, more intimate relationships with different aspects of you that will also reward you um, by jumping on your bus, but letting you be the driver, the part of you that wants to drive the bus and they're there to help as opposed to they're driving the bus and you get all bent out of shape when it doesn't work is when we're all working together and I'm recognizing all of a sudden I'm up leveling my nervous system. I'm retraining her. I'm reprogramming her to experience her own worthiness. And this is where I'm sourcing from myself instead of waiting for some husband, some boyfriend, some sister, brother, lady, other God, goddess, job, money to whatever <laughs> define my value. I'm here by spending time and really saying, you know what? I love you and I'm proud of you. I think these, these are like phenomenal, uh, phenomenal tips that you just gave. And I'm so grateful to you. And so T, thank you so much for being with us. And I'm so grateful for you sharing your wisdom, giving all these incredible, inspirational and empowering words. And your message is just phenomenal. It's truly magical. You're a true medicine woman. I'm honored to have you here with us. Thank you so much again. Uh, it's such a pleasure and an honor to be with all of you. And uh, yeah, thank you so much, ladies. And uh, please check out, I created this amazing workbook called How to Live a Brave, Bold, and Beautiful Life Generated Through the Healing Power of Self-Love. So just go to the website and um, let's continue to pave the way in terms of lifting women up and helping them radiate their shine. 